Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is the podcast Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely. Close your eyes, nice and gently. And if you'd love to support this free service that's been free since two thousand and six, or is it nineteen twenty eight? You can go to my website and be ever so generous and loving. Now, now, I'm going to talk normally. So, hello, everybody. Hope you're well, etc. What I thought I would do today, I don't think I've ever done it before, but I might have done. And、um, I don't think I have, but I might have done, because we're coming up to the. Nearly the two hundred mark of、uh, recordings on this podcast.、Uh, so I might have, I might have done absolutely everything at some point, but also I might not have done. So I just recorded a deep sleep whisper hypnosis session. So what I thought, I'd actually go through the process of what I do once I've actually recorded it and uploaded it to the podcast. And at this point, it's not available to listen to publicly. So first of all, what I normally do. Whenever I go to the Spreaker、uh, spreadsheet website control center, I don't know whatever you want to call it, always have a little look at the stats. You know the statistics. I get a bit excited. So the overall downloads, total downloads for my podcasts since the twenty first of November last year. Is three hundred and sixty-four thousand six hundred and thirty-six total plays seven thousand seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty-four. So three thousand three hundred and sixty-four thousand six hundred and thirty-six. And let's refresh it. It's now six hundred and thirty-seven. So let's refresh it again. Refresh it again. Just see. Ah,、oh, still the same. Sometimes it changes quite rapidly. Oh, come on. Change. Oh. I could just tell you there's now nine hundred, but no. See, once I've uploaded a new one, how rapidly change will go up quite rapidly.、Oh. I just wanted to change at least six thirty-eight. Go on, go on, change for Debbie. Change, go on, change, 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 change. Yeah, six hundred thirty-eight. So it's now three hundred sixty-four thousand six hundred thirty-eight. So, just in that minute, that's not a lot. Two downloads a minute, but that's you know sometimes I refresh and it'll go up by fifteen or sixty. Or sometimes I'll 
I'll leave it 10 minutes and it's gone up by 100. So it's, it depends, it variates. 639 now. But don't worry, I'm not just gonna keep refreshing it the whole time. Six hundred and forty. So by me clicking refresh doesn't. Yeah, I'm not kind of making it more downloads because I'm not listening to any of them or playing any of them or downloading anything. I'm just refreshing the console. So yesterday I had. So this is what I do. I kind of basically look at the last day. Because of now it's 2.58 in the morning and we've now started a new day, the 16th of August. So, so far I've only got 53 downloads and one play. Yesterday, the 15th of August, I had 2,498 downloads and 36 plays. Which is actually down from the day before, but I had... Uh, Tuesday the 14th no, Wednesday the 14th of August 2,614 downloads with 28 plays but the Tuesday it was lower than that at 1,751 downloads with 26 plays but the Monday was higher than all of them at 2,681 downloads and 52 plays so it's, it's rare now that it's below 2,000. And uh, it's usually about two. I did actually work out the other day how much it was on average uh, over the last 30 days. And it works out about 2,500 a day, roughly. So that's what I look at. And this hasn't really got anything to do with the uploading process, but I find it hard not to look at the stats. So I'm going to have a look at the. I don't always. I don't do this every time I do a recording, do I? If I did, then, but then that would be boring. So that's a good thing. So I've got Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. So far, 71,774 total downloads and 2,211 total plays. Yesterday, 562 downloads. So that's all right, isn't it? That's okay. And what other podcasts shall I look at? I won't go through all of them, but I'll just go through... Um, 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 um. Let me bore you to sleep. This one. See, yesterday it was down, uh, 193 downloads, but the day before it was 284 downloads. And so far today, three, three downloads. Ah. Oh. In the last uh, this month so far is now the beginning of the 16th the best day has been the 1st of August at 497 downloads and the second best day was the 7th at 441 downloads and yeah so it's so 193 is quite low Maybe yesterday's recording was so awful. <laughs> it was just like it was like the worst recording ever. And Andre was naughty. It was a short recording actually compared to normal. And Andre was just making so much noise and just. In the end, I kind of did bring it to an end, a premature end. It's not the first time that's happened. But uh, I kept it anyway, because I know that some people like to listen to Andre. And uh, even though it is just the background of him, I'm 
up in the carrier bag. So, so that's the that's that podcast. I've got a hundred and ninety six. Let me bore you to sleep. Episodes or recordings. So this will be one hundred and ninety seven, which means. I'm three away from the 200. What do you think I should do to celebrate the 200 mark? Because I think I should. And I know this... uh, I realise that more people listen to the Deep Sleep Whisper one than this. But... Which is fine, because I'm just happy... I'm happy that anyone's listening to anything I do. And for two and a half thousand people a day to be listening to my stuff. And I'm guessing it's two and a half thousand because I can't imagine many people are just listening to lots of different recordings every day. But there might be. But I imagine that a lot of, most people perhaps listen to one a day. Um, but I might be wrong. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to have the audience, happy to have you, and it is growing. It's growing so much, you know, compared to what it was. There was a point where I struggled to get above two thousand, and now two thousand is. It's very rare that it goes below two thousand a day. There was a time I struggled to get above one thousand a day. And when I, you know, when I was getting 500 a day, I was really happy. And then when it went up to 700 downloads a day, I was like, wow, this is brilliant. And then I broke that thousand mark, but then it kept going below. And, you know, every now and then it'd go above a thousand. And I'd be thinking, wow, that's 30,000 a a month. And it's like, amazing, that's, What's that? 360,000 a year. Just on a thousand a day. And then every day it got to the point where I was above a thousand. And it never went below a thousand. And then it slowly got more and more. To the point where it really gets below 2,000 and there will come a time probably when it will never be below 2,000 as it creeps closer to the 3,000 mark. I've had days when I've had it over 3,000. I've had days when I've had over 10,000 actually, but that's rare. That's not like a a regular thing. So I just, I love, I think I love what I'm doing because I get to see I don't get to hear the results because um, I guess it's a one-way conversation, isn't it? But I do like, I kind of go by the stats and it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's like I've worked in clubs and stuff and you you get your feedback by seats on bums. Seats on bums? Bums on seats rather, sorry. Bums on seats. If people turn up, pay to come to the show this week, then again next week, then again next week, and then again Tuesday, and then again Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and if they can, people continually come back, then you're doing something right. It's a success. It's um, the only difference is with a club, you've only got limited space. So you might start out and you've got 200 seats and you might have 50 people turn up or 30 people turn up and you think, wow, 30 is 50 now and it's, it's, it's 30 last week. That's brilliant. And you know that you've got to get at least 100 to really break even. And then you get that 100, 110, 125, and everything over 100 is profit, pure profit. And then 
you know that it's successful because people keep coming back even if no one tells you why they're coming back if that makes sense it'd be nice to have that feedback I suppose I do get a little bit of feedback I had someone you on was it Twitter say to me that on their new best friend so a lady called Beth and she didn't say why but I was happy I didn't I did I suppose I should have asked why really um, I kind of partly wanted to say well what is it you like is it the beard is it is it the, the ferret is it the glasses but then I thought well it's probably the recordings isn't it and then I thought should I say what, what kind of recordings is it which ones because there's so many well that is so many there's only I think five popular ones five of the most popular ones although some of them are starting to grow as well like the sleep hypnosis with music podcast that's starting to get more more downloads daily as growing so I think if I started to make newer recordings for that that will very likely take off like some of the others <sighs> just it's time it's it's just fitting it all in um, the feedback is that I get mainly I guess from the stats but also some nice things like Rian, Rihanna um, from Scotland I think it was she sort of said some nice things and Susan Curter uh, has been supporting me one of my biggest supporters I've got uh, so I think some of the people that lots of, I should make a list because there's a lot of people that do uh, show support whether it's just emotionally not just but if it's emotionally or by showing interest in what I'm doing or by letting me know that what I'm doing is useful or even just liking a picture of Andre or a little video that I've done of him I like that you know that makes I feel good with that stuff because I don't think there's anything cuter in the whole world than my little boy I don't know why because he's annoying but he's just so cute it's that little furry face it's got like a little it's almost like a little teddy bear doesn't smell like a teddy bear <laughs> he, he sounds like a teddy bear that needs to have a wash though I did give him a bath last night he was not happy he's got fleas can you believe it but we're not I think just like grass fleas they're not like um he rolls around in the grass and it's, I take him out so he must have really got into some proper flea infected grass or bushes which um, he could have been rubbing himself up against a hedgehog I don't know and he so I gave him a bath last night that got most of them out I got, you know but it's still some managed to stay and my friend had a flea tablet so he brought a flea tablet and he crushed it up and because he only takes a small part of it a small bit and I said to my friend because you have to basically put it into his mouth put it down the back of his throat and then just keep his mouth closed and rub his neck which I didn't really want to do because I know that he'll have the ump with me and he'll start trashing the place not my friend Andre so I said to my friend can you do it because he's got a lot more experience with ferrets than I have I've got four years but he's had them, for, he's had them since he was a kid and um, he did and he put it down there and in his throat and he, he goes and Andre was looking at me and he was wriggling and he was like making noises and he was and I felt sorry for him so I said I'll oh, just give him to me so I held him, held his mouth closed, and I just rubbed his 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 throat. But he just stayed completely still with me. 
And I just cuddled him and look, he looked at me and I looked, just stared at each other. And he just swallowed it and he was fine after that. So I wanted to not be the bad guy because it's probably a little bit uncomfortable for him, but there's no other way of doing it. Because he'd, if I, he's too clever. If I put him in his food, he won't eat the food. You know, he just, he's, there's no way of kind of tricking him. But he's been good as gold since then. He's had a, I think he's put him off his food tonight because he just had a little bit and he left it. So it might, you know, it's basically, he might not be feeling too well, but if it gets him to, if it gets those fleas and apparently it's supposed to kill the fleas and the eggs um, within sort of 24 hours, which means it's good for him. But they're not spread, they're not got anywhere, they're not come anywhere near me or anything. They're clinging to him. So I don't know what to do though because he loves going out so much. I mean, I'm talking, he loves it. Most ferrets that are in kind of, I don't like the word captivity because I don't feel like I'm kind of keeping him captive. But uh, domestic ferrets or ferrets living in houses would normally very likely just live in a cage for most of the time and then perhaps be let out to play around and stuff because they do make a mess they do you know I think uh, the way I live with him is probably not the way most people would just because I let him have full reign of everything which is probably not a good thing but I just you know what locking him up in a cage which I have done a lot of the time but I don't anymore uh, so much but I used to lock him up at night when I was in bed and then when he was naughty and if he was really kind of playing up I'd put him in his cage um sometimes he'd be scratching at the front door and I'd be like worried that he'd disturb the neighbours and all that stuff but now he's, he's pretty good you know I'll close him in the living room at night or when I go to bed rather I don't hear him scratching at the door or anything he's got everything he needs in here he's got all his toys he's got all, everything various different places he can sleep He's got the whole room. It's, you know, it's the biggest room that any ferret will ever have for a bedroom. So I think he's fairly happy. He's fast asleep now. I even had to turn the heating on because it's a bit chilly. That's one of the, uh, one of the downsides of staying up all night is even when it's nice during the day in August, it seems to get cold at night. Ask anyone that's camping, they'll tell you. August is not a good month to go camping if you want to be warm at night. Depending where you live, of course, I'm, I'm coming from a English perspective. Of course, if you live in Thailand or somewhere where it's perhaps a nicer weather, then uh, it's different. And I don't know how I got to talk about Andre, but it's, uh, I think I was just talking about it. it's, yeah, Brooke, Brooke is another person who's been supportive to me. And she's a dean of a university and she's very positive, very, like, very positive person. And I've spoken to her a few times and she lives in America. And it's really strange that I assumed, and you know what they say about assume, but I assumed that she was just naturally a very positive person. And she didn't have to do anything about it. 
it just it just came naturally and I kind of assumed that she didn't do anything in order to c- c- keep herself positive but I was wrong and she did do stuff in order to keep the positivity and to increase the positivity and to you know all that stuff so she was working always working on herself always um, working with positive affirmations as I do as well now and it's like oh okay isn't it really weird just to assume it's like it's like seeing someone that's really muscular and just assuming that they were born that way you know oh they've got the genetics they've got the genetics and well no they had the the fact is they might have spent the last 15 years working on it, going to the gym, working on their diet. You know, it's, it's, we have, I think we've got talents that we have. Maybe we're naturally inclined to certain things for whatever reason. And I, I kind of, I suppose I kind of starting to think that I'm here for this. You know, I'm on this planet for this. I don't mean just talking absolute rubbish all the time, but for, you know, the overall what I do. Uh, the overall free service that I offer. I think that's why I'm here. And it took a long, not a long time. I've kind of believed that for a long time, but... I'm, I think I'm starting to see it a little bit differently. Sometimes when I don't know when I step back and I look at all the energy I put into it and how it's the only thing I think about really. It's the only thing that I is. It's not like some little hobby that I've got. It's something that I give kind of everything to. But there are times when there's more going out than going in. I don't mean financially, because obviously that's all the time. Uh, but there's, there's sort of like an energy perspective. I. I need to start reading more. I really do. I think that. And I've got quite a few books to read. I mean, lately I've been watching videos. um, Been watching uh, quite a few YouTube videos. In fact, I've not watched any television today at all. Apart from when I was watching television. I just, just remembered I did watch some television. But that was when I was at my friend's. But generally, I haven't watched any television here. I don't think. But I watched a couple of YouTube videos. And I've been watching this. uh, It's a YouTube channel called The Passionate Few. The Passionate Few. And this man called Omar, he interviews successful people. You know, really successful people. And he interviews quite in depth. It's not just a case of how did you make your money? What did you do with your money? How did you spend it? You know, this it's not gratuitous um, money, 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 money. It's about the mindset. It's about the the childhood. It's about the the steps, the the things in life that happened that led that person to where they are now. And uh, I think it's very, very interesting. So I've been watching those, and I've watched probably probably about 10, 10 of them. And they all last about an hour, hour and a half each. And I just watched one where it's interviewing the man who created the spicy chichos. Is it chichis, chichos? So we don't have them over here, I don't think, but you have them in America, and they're, I don't 
don't know what they are, but they're like a crisp or chips, uh, you know, whatever you call them. A puff. I don't, they might be like our Watsits. Because we have these puffy crisps called Watsits. And they're cheesy and sometimes they're spicy. So maybe it's the equivalent to that. Or maybe you did it first in America, I don't know. Or you, whoever's listening, if it's American. I really don't know the, the, the answer to that. Although I've got a laptop in front of me and I could just look it up. Why don't I just look it up? I'm going to look it up. Chichos. 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 German Chicho means thanks. C for the compatible of friends. Huh? Chicos. Chichos. Must have got this wrong then. Chicho's crisps, or would they be um, pa- uh, chips? Chicho Cheetos, not Chicho's. Cheetos. <laughs> there you go. So Cheetos. I'll look at Wikipedia and let's have a look. Formerly styled as Cheetos until 1998, is a brand of cheese flavoured puffed cornmeal, which is, I think, very similar to what we have here. A subsidiary of Pepsi.co. Fritos creator Charles Elmer Doolin invented Cheetos in 1948 and began distribution in the US. This is from Wikipedia. The initial success of Cheetos was a contributing factor to the merger between the Frito Company and H. W. Lay and Company in 1961 to form Frito Lay. In the 1965, Frito Lay uh, became a subsidiary of the Pepsi Cola Company, forming Pepsi Co. Oh, Pepsi! That's the that's the cola that people drink when they can't get normal Coke, isn't it? Yeah. In 2010, Cheetos was ranked as a top-selling brand of cheese puffs. Andre. And um, in its primary market of the United States, worldwide, the annual retail sales totaled approximately four billion. The original Crunchy Cheetos, four billion dollars as the original Crunchy Cheetos are still in production, but the product has since expanded to include 21 different types of Cheetos in North America alone. As Cheetos are sold in more than 36 countries, the flavor and composition is often varied to match regional taste and cultural preferences, such as savory American cream in China and strawberry Cheetos in Japan. Wow, strawberry. So let's have a look. I'm going to have a look at the the one. It's not mentioning the man that I want to put. Ah, oh, this might be it. It doesn't seem to be mentioning the man because he. I think it was the early 80s that he did this, but he's. 
Ah. Cheesy puffs, puss, cheesy's kutcher, flaming hot and crunchy. Chester Cheetah, it's Chester Cheetah. Chester Cheetah is a fictional character and a fictional mascot. It's a weird smell in here. I need to open the window. Andre. Andre, can you open the window please, mate? He's so lazy. Well, it's not saying anything about the man. The man with a plan. To uh, this, this man I spoke is that I mentioned that I read watched rather <laughs> and my words are gone blah blah blah, 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 red, sh- mm, blah, blah. and he it basically was a janitor in the Cheetos factory and he had an idea about having spicy Cheetos because he was he was Mexican uh, and he he liked spicy food and he not, not saying that's the reason he, he liked spicy food because he was Mexican or that he was Mexican because he liked spicy food but he his thinking was they didn't have um, they weren't as tasty as what they could be so he Yeah, so that's it. He basically just marketed or pitched his uh, idea and became very rich. Yeah. Wow. The revenue in 2017 was 15.79 billion. It's not bad, is it? I wonder why they're not mentioning my friend. That's weird. Munchos, munchos. Oh, oh, I found it. Frito Lay acquired Grandma's Cookies in 1980 which launched nationwide in the United States in 1983. In January 1978, Frito-Lay's product development group led by Jack Likowski completed development of Tostillos Tostitos a Mexican style tortillo chip lineup. Tostitos, I should be able to say the word tit, shouldn't I? It's to, tostitos, traditional flavour, and tostitos, nacho cheese flavour, went into national distribution in the United States by 1980 and reached the sales of 100, 100, 140 million, making it one of the most successful new products introduction in Frito-Lay history. Tos Tit Os sales grew quickly and in 1985 it had become Frito-Lay's fifth largest brand, generating annual sales of 200 million. Ah, so I'm going to quickly go back to Tostistos, Tostistos. So this should give me a little bit of uh, information about the man then. So Tostistos is a brand of Frito-Lay that produces different tortilla chips, blah, blah, blah. In 1978, Jack Lebowski... So someone makes it if it's him. It might not be him. It might be him. I 
don't remember. Let's have a look, see if it's him. Because I remember because he's got a beard. Not that I remember every single person's got a beard. But he's... No, that's not him. Images. Oh. No, unless... That's him without a beard. Which it could be. Because not everybody always has a beard, do they? There have been times when I didn't have a beard. And times when I did. My dad used to have a beard. Doesn't have one now. Hasn't had one since probably the early 80s. Not his early 80s, because he's not that old. But 1980s. And although I have seen him with stubble, which looks strange, just because I'm not used to seeing him with, with stubble. I mean, imagine if you saw a, a crocodile for the first time. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? I'm not comparing myself, my, my dad with stubble and a, croc, you know, a crocodile. I don't think the two are necessarily connected right I know a different way what's it called tostistos tostistos tos tos ok to, what is it tos tit os janitor so that must come up, surely. Okay, here we go, here we go, I'm so excited. A janitor invented flaming hot Cheetos and became a Pepsi Co something. So, yeah, so what I'll do, Richard Montanez that's his name Richard Montanez or Montanez I'm not sure so I'm just going to click on him oh apparently he's just come up his net worth Richard Montanez has an estimated net worth of 14.2 million but the story wasn't really about the money. It was about how he went from being a janitor to contacting the CEO of the company saying that he's got an idea for a new flavour. And subsequently, it caused a big, a big fur fur. Is that fur? Fur fur her? schism whatever within the company because that wasn't the process and I think some people got the ump with him because they were the uh, the ideas men or women they were the ones that were the managers and how could a janitor just contact their CEO straight away directly without going through all a protocol a protocol which would have uh, very much likely stopped him in his tracks before he even got any further than his line manager in the factory so yeah good for him right so I'll get rid of him no, I'll get rid of him I'm going to put a hit out on him um, so the what I've got here is I've done the stats oh let's see how much has gone up now so the stats before, I can't remember what they were. I don't know if I remember what it was, but it's now 364, 674. Anyway, so what I do is I click on all shows and there's 45 shows that I've got. I go down to uh, Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. And I click on that. 
and so far I've got a hundred and yesterday was the 129th episode or recording so today is 130 which ain't bad is it really and so what I do is I click on the yesterday's episode I copy the title I go back I go into the new episode that's not been published yet I paste yesterday's title in change it from 129 to 130 change the date from the 15th to the 16th complicated stuff this isn't it and it's basically it just says 130 or number 130 deep sleep whisper hypnosis Jason Newland in brackets 16th of August 2019 in brackets and in the end deepsleepwhisper.com which is the website and click that up to post that into the description and I'm going to save so that's the title saved now I click on episode audio file and I download it so this version that I'm downloading will have the bits at the beginning where I'm coughing and rumbling around and swearing and shouting and chucking saucepans around you know just normal stuff I do before I start a relaxing recording a bit of tap dancing drums do a little, do a little drum solo sometimes so now it's downloaded I click on showing folder I click on the file at the moment it's saying podcast 1565918 like that so I click on that copy and paste the name of the podcast title episode and I then I type in in capitals unedited so I can differentiate between this one and the next one when it's completed then I close that I open up the audio editor and then I open the file so I go down to I forget what number it was was it 196 196 yeah 196 and I will just hover over it just to check no no it's not on desk that's, that's it's 129 wasn't it 196 was yesterday's recording uh, for let me boy to sleep so 126 Hundred and twenty six deep sleep deep sleep whisper hypnosis no hundred and twenty <laughs> I normally do this quite quickly, hundred and twenty nine deep sleep. So it's hundred and thirty, isn't it? Okay, so I click on that. That's why I put the big words unedited, so it's much easier to find. It's because I'm doing two things at once, that's why. If I was just doing this, I wouldn't be talking and doing it. It just makes it a little bit... uh, So there's going to be a little bit of background sound as I edit it, because I have to listen to it. So hopefully you'll be alright with that. It's going to be very low level because it's the whisper one as well. So it's so what I do. I've got the audio editor open. So I have to increase the size because it's just a bunch of waves on the screen with two lines and like waves going up and down, and I've got a increase the page so I can get to where I want to go so I click just before where I think it's gonna start the actual recording I don't miss out all the drum solo and stuff like that the uh, howling to the full moon just the normal stuff I do before a sleep session now play so 
so that's that and then I delete the beginning bit of the stuff that's not needed and then I just put an effect where I fade in the beginning of the recording and now I skip to the end skip to the end of the recording eventually and I just I'm gonna have to turn the volume up a little bit because I need to be able to hear see that looks like it really quiet at the end it's practically I don't think you can hardly even hear it at the end Just about. Okay, so nowhere to finish it. I'll stop that. Deeply. And then I fade that out. It's practically inaudible, the last bit. It's weird. It's, like, it's amazing how it gets so quiet at the end. So export. So that's really the the editing part. The only time I need to do anything major is if I don't know. There's been a lot of noise during the recording. I might look back, but generally, it's if I record them in the middle of the night, it's usually okay. I'll, I'll look over it. if there's any big spike I'll kind of go on and have a little listen um, it's really weird sometimes when I do the let me boy to sleep it almost sounds like someone's farted of course no one has but I don't know where that comes from it must be some kind of blip on the uh, recording device so now I'm deleting I'm going to save this as a file but leave out the unedited bit save it I'll put in my name as the artist paste put 2019 as the year and that's it and now it is exporting entire file at 128 kbps it could be a higher level of uh, audio, but because it's just speaking, I think it works okay the way it is. I hope so. I know the volume is not loud, but nothing I do is loud. I don't speak loudly. So I think if it was like a normal conversation, it would be louder but even then I'm not really a loud speaker unless I'm talking to someone where there's traffic going past then you kind of have to up the level of volume but I don't like that because that I feel my voice gets a little bit raspberry a little bit croaky a little bit there. So now it's still downloading or uploading or processing, whatever. You, yeah, processing probably is the right word. It doesn't take too long. It's taken one minute thirty-seven seconds so far. There's ten seconds left. And that means that once that's done, I can then upload it. With the longer recordings, it can take anything up to 10 minutes. So now I go back, because it's finished, I now go back to the Spreaker page. And there's two buttons. There's a download episode button, black button with white writing. I've already downloaded it with that. 
and then edited it. Next to that, there's a yellow button with black writing with the word replace. So what I do is I click on that to replace the file. So I need to go to the correct place. It's on downloads. What number is it? 130. So what I need to do, what I do, this is what I do. So I go to this two 130 deep sleep whisper hypnosis, two of them. So I go to one, so that's the one with the word unedited. So I delete that. And the main thing is never to delete it until the other one's completed. So the one I've got now is 22 minutes, 25 seconds long. And it's 20.5 megabytes. Contri contributing artist, Jason Newland. Yeah, MP3 file. So I'm gonna now click on that and that will upload it. So I'm replacing the old original file with the new edited file. It's pretty quick. 50% uh, is now done. So it's, it's, Spreak is very good. So it's one of the quickest uploaders out of all the podcasts, hosts that I've used. And I've used pretty much all of them over the years. They've all got things going for them. But my favourite, my favourite is Spreaker. I can't help it, I just love it. I love Spreaker. Because it does give me what I need. And I'm staying with them. But I do also have a podcast on SoundCloud and Podbean. So I'm clearly not very loyal, am I? So now it's uploaded, it's done. So I go to episode info. And uh, so what I do now is that's the page where I had the title and a description. Now really, if I wanted to get more listeners and to have, you know, get a better search engine optimization, I would put in a description of the recording. But I can't be asked, so I'm not going to. It's uh, it's hard when you've got over a thousand recordings. It's a lot to keep going through them and sort of trying to put a description of the recording. I'm going to do it, I am, but not today. So I've got, now I'm making it public. Visibility, I'm going from private to public. There's also limited access, can be listened to only via limited access link. So I can keep it private where only I can listen to it, or I could send you like a personal link where it's not public, but I, I, I keep them public. And I'm gonna save that. And that's good. So what I do now is I click back three times. So I go to the actual Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis uh, podcast, the front of it, which is the original page I went to. So I've got 130 at the top, 16th of August. That's so what I do now. And I might as well just go through what I do with the whole thing. It's boring, but I might as well, at least then you know what I do. So now I go to I click on embed episode. No, I don't. It's the wrong one. I click on share. So I click on share and Facebook. So I might have done this before. I'm not sure. I've done this before hundreds of times. But so I'm clicking to Facebook. So I'm just going to add it to my main Facebook page and plus under my story. So that's that's nearly done. Nearly done. Nearly, 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 nearly done. And the second one is Facebook again. 
I'm going to add this to my Facebook page, which has about about 29,000 followers on that one. And for some reason, hmm. for some reason, it's not coming up properly. I don't know why that is. I'll leave that. I'll try that again. So try it on my Facebook page on the page you manage. Ah. For some reason it's not allowing it. So I'm gonna kinda come out of that. I can't be bothered to mess around. Usually it does, but sometimes the connection doesn't connect. Andre, Andre, right now connecting it to, I'm putting it onto Twitter. That's done. And now I'm going to add it to, or share it with YouTube. That's done. And that, I'm not going to go through everything else I do, but basically that is the, the main thing that is done on that particular podcast. Now I share it also onto my main webcast, my web main website, jasonnewland.com. I upload it to deepsleepwhisper.com. I also upload it to freesleephypnosis.com and it will be uploaded to free MP3 free hypno oh, is it free hypnosis mp3s.com something like that so eventually it will be available on quite a few different websites uh, on the free sleep hypnosis.com it's basically it's got all the different podcasts that I have that are sleep related that, so that's kind of useful for people that maybe they're, they're not just want to listen to just one thing they might like to go between listening to the Deep Sleep Whisper, to the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, maybe to these, Let Me Boy to Sleep, possibly even to some of the older stuff, maybe the Fall Asleep Listening to Sheep. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Um, or the Sleep Hypnosis with Music, or Podcast, or the In Bed with Jason podcast. You know, there's so there's a few different um, there's a seven day insomnia podcast a seven, seven day cure insomnia which had about over 200,000 downloads on that podcast when it was on Podomatic and for some silly reason I deleted it from Podomatic about two years ago or three years ago, two years ago I should have left it probably be up to about 500,000 now it's why didn't I just leave it didn't cost me anything and people were downloading it and hopefully benefiting from it, from it as well and I could have it could just be my a podcast that was just there and it could be one that I could just visit every now and then and just check the stats and say oh it's now a million downloads which it would have got to probably if I'd have just left it. Maybe not for a few years, but and then the thirty day relaxation hypnosis course was another one that I had on Podomatic and that had about hundred and eighty thousand downloads. Again I didn't do anything, I just uploaded it in two thousand and eleven and just left it. I know you could say, well, because two years ago that had been there for six years yeah but six years well I hadn't done nothing, anything I hadn't done anything to promote it it just was there but I deleted that one as well they're all available on here but and uh, they're available on uh, iTunes and you know various places but hardly anybody listens to them and that's weird because it's just weird to know that something was so popular, yet now it's practically invisible. It's like the hypnotic buffet that I did. I used to get loads of people 
especially on YouTube, watching those. And on SoundCloud, I, you know, as soon as I upload it on SoundCloud, I get loads of downloads of each episode. Now, no one seems to even know it's there. It's like, what's going on? And again, that's on iTunes, that's on on my Spreaker, that's, you know, so I think I find it interesting because I think some of my best work has been done on the podcast that no one listened to. Like the Hypno Chats, Hypnotic Buffet, Healing Hypnosis. Those three podcasts are probably possibly my best work. Never mind. And also the Self Development Hypnosis podcast. Don't get much action on there. And there's sort of the long recordings, like helping people with nail biting and um, emotional issues and stuff like that. Again, it doesn't. It's like they they don't. They get I get people visiting and downloading, but nothing compared to the the sleep stuff that I do. But there you go. I'm not moaning. I'm just 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 observing. I'm just a. Just observing, that's all. Stop picking on me, I'm just observing. So have a great day, evening, weekend, holiday, Christmas, Easter, Ramadan, whatever you're celebrating, because you could be listening to this at any time in the future. You know, just because I'm releasing it on the 16th of August, 2019, you could be listening to this on the 5th of February 2039 you could be listening to this 100 years after I died you know, who knows so if you are then by listening to this you're keeping me alive because I realised the other day I was watching Jim Rohn Jim Rohn and his surname is R-O-H-N is for me personally but it's not just for me a lot of people have been influenced by him including people like Tony Robbins you know they're the, they're the, he's the person that influenced the person I mean Tony Robbins is I would say by far the most famous uh, motivational speaker the world's ever seen ever the, the, the western world anyway and uh, but Jim Rohn was one of the people that influenced him amazing absolutely amazing person like I can't I can't listen to him enough absolutely love him and he's dead he died but he's not dead it's a bit of a weird thing to talk about at the end of a relaxing sleep session but he lives on when I listen to him he is alive it's kind of I feel like he lives through me he lives through whoever listens in, to him which means I get to live on forever yay just got to keep listening to me but if, check him out Jim Rohn absolutely Amazing, and he's on YouTube and stuff, so you can listen to him for free. Absolutely phenomenal. And anyway, I'm gonna go, gonna go, and uh, I wish you a beautiful whatever it is for you, beautiful day ahead. And remember that you deserve to be happy, and remember even more. To be kind to yourself. Remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love. Bye.